If you've been looking at my My Anime List profiles of late, you'll see three things that might catch your eye. I actually like the gay swimming show, these people keep harassing me, and I've given the past three shows I've watched 1 out of 10s, except Vampire Homes. I actually kind of like that one. Judging by the title, it's kind of obvious what I've been doing. I literally just searched the lowest rated anime on my anime list. So I just find the absolute shittiest, most garbage anime because I hate myself. You see, I thought shit like Tokyo Ghoul, Kiss This, or like Bleach were the worst of the worst. But dear god, have I discovered just a plethora of just garbage. I, I don't want to hear anyone talk shit about My Hero Academia being bad, because clearly you haven't watched, like, Cuba. Truth is, there's a plethora of the lowest rated anime, but I just chose three that stuck out to me. If, like, five people enjoy this or some shit, I might make another follow-up video touching on more of this garbage. But for now, let's just dive into the shit I picked, starting with none other than the classic. See, Mars of Destruction is kind of infamous because it's been like the lowest rated anime on my anime list for so long. Like the absolute bottom of the barrel, so like clearly it must be shit. But truth is, when I was looking at the plot synopsis for this one, nothing really caught my attention. The show's just kind of about these teenagers having to defend the Earth from some alien invaders. Just using like mechas and weapons and shit, I don't know. It sounded like pretty standard sci-fi anime, but the execution of it all is just... It, it, it's kind of what gave it oh, such an abysmally low, pretty well-deserved score. Starting off, the animation is kind of laughable, like, there's barely any movement whatsoever, and when they do, there's like no weight to any of it. Like, look at this monster get shot dead. D did anything even happen to him? Like, what? As for the characters, quite frankly, I literally couldn't tell you any of their names except for the protagonist, Tommy. Because I just thought it was really funny for a dude named Tommy to be a protagonist name. Like, that's such a virgin name. Uh, the only other character of note, I guess, is this one girl. Not because she's significant or anything, I just think it's funny. Because she gets her head blown off and the other girls are just like, Well, that sucks, and then they just move on. It gets even better because afterwards they take her to the hospital. And then the doctor is just like... <laughs> like, wow, that was a nice observation, Doc. Anyways, Tommy, you know, he has some bitching scene, you know, just like, I don't want to get in the mecha suit thing, but they kind of just forgot about it. It also just ends with the aliens being like, no, humans were the aliens all along, and then it just ends. I don't know if they expected us, you know, to care enough to you know, watch this so it could get picked up for, like, maybe future episodes. But I don't, I don't know. Nobody gave a shit. I, I don't give a shit. Truthfully speaking, this was just really boring to watch, and the only reason I got through it is because a couple minutes in, I just decided, yeah, I think I get the gist of this. So I switched to the fan-made English dub. Like, the sub voice acting was, like, fine, whatever. It, it was flat, but... The English dub, absolute banger. It's, it's like, so good. Because it's not official by any means. It was made by, like, some stoners in their basement in 2016. And they do all of the sound effects by their own and use, like, Power Rangers music. It, it's, it's so good. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you give a damn. Even then, though, there's only so much these guys can do to, like, save such a boring plot. Like, there's only so many jokes you can make. It, like, it was only 20 minutes, but truthfully, it was the longest 20 minutes of my life. Overall, I just wouldn't suggest watching this, since you can't even get much ironic enjoyment from it. But if you really need to do it, I'd suggest watching the fan dub. It exists on YouTube. Just look it up. Because, honestly, nobody could be bothered to copyright claim anything from Mars of Destruction. So, both this and the original OVA itself are fully on YouTube. With that out of the way, we're gonna move on to, you know, the show that probably pissed me off the most.
truthfully, the only reason I even watched this one was because my friend watched it when he was like 12, and I think he's been traumatized ever since. So, as the good friend I am, I decided to shoulder the burden that is pupa. And, yeah, I fucking regret everything. So what exactly is a pupa? Well, you know, it's a fucking metamorphosis state for an insect. But other than that, uh, it's an anime about two siblings, U Utsutu and Yume, both of which are high schoolers who are abandoned by their abusive parents. And, you know, they got a little too close of a relationship. <laughs> Just a little bit. One day when walking home from school, Yume, you know, she saw a red butterfly which led her to a monster. Which I I think exploded from the dog. I don't know if it exploded from the dog or the dog like was the monster. But you know, it it, it was like a weird red goop thing. I don't fucking know dude. It, anyways, it gave her a virus known as the pupa virus. And this basically causes her to turn into a big flesh eating monster. It, you know, and then her brother, you know, comes in like an idiot and is like, even if you're a big flesh-eating monster, you know, you're still my sister. And then she just fucking eats him. <laughs> and then she has a forced mental breakdown and then her brother comes to her in her mind and is like, I don't mind if you eat me. And then she just like randomly turns back to normal. So like, that's it, right? You know, the brother's dead. You know, things are all fine and dandy. Well, you know, it actually turns out the brother also got the pupa virus somehow, which somehow gives him, like, Deadpool-type regeneration. Despite the sister being back to normal, her craving for flesh is still persistent, and like any loving brother would do, he just lets his sister, like, eat him, you know? <laughs> That's a, that's a real nice thing. I love this show. You see, the difference between, like, Pupa and, like, Mars of Destruction is I feel like Pupa actually had some decent ideas going on. But it's just the pure execution of everything that's atrocious. Like, let's look at Tokyo Ghoul, for example. Something that this series is very clearly influenced by. Tokyo Ghoul had the ghouls, who are forced to eat humans for survival. Which created an interesting narrative on whether or not it was morally okay to, you know, be doing that for the sake of your survival. Meanwhile, Pupa instead decides to make a weird, gross, like, cannibalistic incest story. It's like if Kiss Sis and, like, Tokyo Ghoul had a baby. It's just fucking disgusting, dude. It, but, like, here's the thing. I think if the story was instead about, like... The brother, Utsuru, finding a way to kill people and, like, feed them to his sister in order to keep her alive, that could have been kind of cool. It would have been, like, kind of a moral dilemma on whether or not it was okay to take the lives of others you don't know for, like, the sake of someone you love and care about. And the show also, like, brings in the subject of abuse. And, well, it started off pretty simple. It worked decent enough. For as much as I can ask from a show about incest, cannibalistic siblings, you know, but it all really falls apart when we get an episode explaining that you may actually had the pupa disease when she was a baby, which, no, she didn't. Unless she, like, somehow got cured, but, like, she hasn't been eating people until now, so it makes no sense. But anyways, this led the mother to try to kill her, and I guess we're supposed to be against the mother, but quite frankly, I don't blame her for trying to kill Yume. Considering, you know, she was a threat to not only, you know, the mother, the brother, all of society. I, we're, we're just supposed to be like, oh yeah, she deserved to live. But like, no, yeah, it's a bit messed up to like, murder your baby, but... Honestly, that was really the most rational decision. 
But even then, I can't even feel bad about the mother because at the end of the episode, she reveals that like she like she loves being abused by the father, and I guess that's why she stayed on him. If you aren't gonna handle the subject of abuse with like you know care and like actually take it seriously, then don't even bother having such a sensitive subject. Overall, the show probably disappointed me the most out of the bunch, simply because I think it was, you know, the only one that had some potential to be a cool series. It's just overall really disgusting and, like, not in the way it's supposed to be. Like, yes, some of the scenes are, like, shocking, but they weren't anything, like, absolutely, like, horrifying. It was more so just, like, gross because you know damn well the creators were, like, slapping the hell out of their meat when, like, they just drew Yume, like, eating chunks of her brother's back. Like, the creators scared me more than the show itself. The only redeeming thing I could say about this show is, like, the art style is kind of nice, and the opening is a banger. It's literally the saving grace of this show, and also the fact the episodes are no longer than four minutes at a time, and there's only 12 of them. Honestly, I'd only suggest watching this show if, like, you're a fucking psychopath and want to, like, screw with your friends and be like, oh, dude, watch the Discord stream or watch something great, and it's, like, fucking Pupa episode 6. I also forgot to mention this weird hat girl shows up throughout the series, but honestly, I don't, I, I don't know why she's here. She doesn't do anything, except for that weird scene where, like, she's pregnant in a bathtub. I don't know what's wrong with that. I didn't want to leave this video off on, like, a sour note, because trust me, Pupa is a very sour note. So let's take a look at what I consider the best one out of all of these. Dude, I gotta be fucking real with you, I love Vampire Homes. This show is a banger, and it's also the absolute shittiest thing I've seen in my life. Like, I think the synopsis for on my anime list speaks absolute volumes on this show's quality. The great detective Holmes does not solve mysteries and use deductive reasoning. He does, however, hunt vampires. Using three minute episodes, Vampire Holmes retells the story of the great Holmes and his assistant Hudson. What begins as an ordinary detective agency takes a turn for the occult when the Metropolitan Police of London secretly hire Holmes and Hudson to investigate vampires. Or at least that's what Holmes would tell anybody who asks. In reality, he and Hudson spend most of their time sitting around arguing and failing to solve any cases. And honestly, yeah, the subscription's pretty much spot on. It's a 12 minute episode series with each being around 3 minutes. And, you know, there's literally nothing about Holmes being a dickhead. And just his assistant Hudson at screaming at him. The episode, you know, the episode's fucking slap, dude. I don't know what more to say. You see, the show's actually a big advertisement for the Vampire Holmes mobile game, which I couldn't find any footage for beyond like the clips shown in the advertisements we get after every episode. But I guarantee you, it's a masterpiece. The thing with this show compared to all the other shows is it has a weird amount of self-awareness to it. And, you know, I'm aware that fucking being self-aware of your shit still means your shit, but like, god dude, it's, I, I just love this show too much. Anyways, like, the, you know, the characters do nothing but argue. They, you know, they just sit in this same MS Paint looking room, and there's just no mysteries and no vampires at all, despite the title. Like, there's not a single vampire, I don't think. But, like, that's the entire joke of the series. Like, it's just funny to me. I don't know what my sense of humor is. Like, yeah, not all the jokes land, but, like, they're so rapid fire that, like, everyone that falls flat, there's immediately one after that'll probably make you laugh. 
there isn't much else to really say about this show besides the fact that in its final episode, like Hudson discovers Holmes wasn't actually lazy the whole series. All of the stupid stuff he was doing the entire series was secretly leading up to him cracking a big case. Meaning that, at the end of the day, yes, this show was a big mystery. Except when, you know, Holmes walks in and is like, nah, I just wasn't doing anything. I didn't solve that case. I'm, you know, I'm not, definitely not doing this series justice, but just by talking about it. So I'm gonna highly suggest giving it a watch with some friends or something. It's fucking hilarious, dude. It only takes like 30 minutes to watch, so there isn't much to really lose. Not, like, come on, watch Vampire Holmes. Also, like, come on, the opening, straight up banger.